Okay, folks, so before we dive into this quick lesson about using the quadratic formula to solve, I'm just going to justify why we need to use it. Um, you could be presented with a parabola such as y is equal to 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. Graphing that, we can pretty easily see that it does indeed intersect the x-axis twice, which means that it is going to have two values for x when y is equal to 0. Now, you might attempt to factor this, but factoring is going to be very difficult. You could factor to get that one x value is going to be negative 3. But unfortunately, the second x value... Okay, so let's talk about using our quadratic formula. First of all, recall that when I'm asking you to solve a quadratic equation, that means that you're finding the x-intercepts, otherwise known as the zeros. Previously, we have solved by factoring, and always, when in doubt, you should always try factoring first. If you cannot factor, we need to use the quadratic formula for the standard equation ax squared plus bx plus c, and our quadratic formula is x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. Let's start with our first example. 2x squared plus 5x minus 3 is equal to 0. Let's start with our quadratic equation. If it helps, I'm just going to write an a, b, and c underneath as a reminder for what all of the values are. So x is equal to negative, and then whatever my b value is, so it's going to be negative 5, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So again, b is 5, so I'm going to do 5 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 3. All of that is within my square root, and then I'm going to go divided by... 2 times a, which is 2. We can start evaluating this. I'm just going to leave my negative 5 there, plus or minus the square root. 5 squared is 25. Negative 4 times 2 times negative 3 is positive 24. All divided by 2 times 2, which is 4. So we have negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 plus 24 is 49, all divided by 4. So then it's going to be negative 5 plus or minus, um, and we can take the square root of 49 nice and easily, 7, divided by 4. So this is when we're going to break it off into two options. So remember, just like we had um, previously where we said, okay, it's either one or the other, this is where I'm going to get my two options from. So option number one is when this is a positive sign. So x is equal to negative 5 plus 7 divided by 4. Negative 5 plus 7 is 2 over 4 or just 1 over 2. The second option is where this is going to be a negative sign. So option number two is x is negative 5 minus 7 divided by 4. Negative 5 minus 7 is negative 12 over 4, or just negative 3. Okay, therefore, x is either a half or x is negative 3, just like we saw on that graph. Let's do a second one here. 3x squared minus 7x plus 1. Let's start with our quadratic equation, our quadratic formula. x is equal to negative b, so negative, negative 7, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so b is negative 7, negative 7 squared minus 4 times a, which is 3, times c, which is 1. All of that under my square root sign. And this whole thing divided by 2 times a, which is 3. Let's start evaluating. Negative, negative 7 is positive 7. Plus or minus the square root of negative 7 squared is 49. Negative 4 times 3 times positive 1 is negative 12. And 2 times 3 is 6. 7 plus or minus the square root of 
49 minus 12 is 37 divided by 6. 37 is not a nice number to take a square root of. So I'm going to take the square root here and I'm going to round to two decimal places. So x is either 7 plus or minus 6.08 divided by 6. So we have a perfect example here of now where decimals are involved because the square root of 7 is this, uh, 37 is this super long number. Okay, option number one is when this is a positive sign. So x is equal to 7 plus 6.08 divided by 6. 7 plus 6.08 divided by 6 is equal to, x is going to be about 2.18. And I'm using the about symbol here because I had rounded. And the other option is that x is 7 minus 6.08 all divided by 6. 7 minus 6.08 divided by 6 is about 153. Okay? And again, we're using the about symbols to find our two x values. Okay, let's do one more before we do some word problems. 3x squared minus 4x plus 5 is equal to 0. Okay, again, quadratic equation here. x is negative b, so negative negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared, so that's negative 4 squared, minus 4 times a, which is 3, times 5, which is c, 5, all divided by 2 times 3, which is a. Okay, let's start, continue solving. Negative negative 4 is positive 4, plus or minus the square root, negative 4 squared is 16, Negative 4 times 3 times 5 is negative 60, all divided by 2 times 3, which is 6. So that'll be 4 plus or minus 16 minus 60 is negative 44, all divided by 6. And we have to stop right away. I mean, I could split these up if I wanted to, but I'm stopping right away because I recognize that you cannot take the square root of a negative number. That you just can't. Which means that there are no real roots. As in, it is impossible that this parabola touches our x-axis. Okay? If you really wanted to break it up and, and show that separately, I could say, well, option one is that x is equal to 4 plus the square root of negative 44 divided by 6, and option number 2 is that x is equal to 4 minus the square root of negative 44, all divided by 6, but in general, there are no real roots. And let's just pause for a second and take a look at what this looks like on our graphing calculator. So I've gone ahead and graphed this, y is equal to 3x squared minus 4x plus 5. You can see this parabola comes really close to touching the x-axis, but it never actually does, okay? That means that there are no roots for this parabola. You could have jumped to that conclusion if you graphed first, but it was important that you understand what that looks like when you are actually using the quadratic formula, and it looks like when you have a negative number underneath your square root sign. Let's now move on to a couple of word problems. A toy rocket is launched from the top of a hill. The height h of the rocket can be represented by h is equal to negative 0.2 d squared plus 2.5 d plus 8, where d is the horizontal distance and both of these are in meters. So both the height as well as the horizontal distance it's traveled. Determine the horizontal distance traveled by the rocket. Let's start by visualizing what this looks like. In order to find the horizontal distance traveled by the rocket, we need to find the two x-intercepts, i.e. when height is equal to zero. I'm going to start by doing that by setting h is equal to zero for the rest of my equation. 
I could try factoring um, by uh, using a variety of strategies, um, group factoring or complex trinomial factoring, but because we're dealing with the decimal here, I'm just going to go straight to using the quadratic formula and not waste my time. Because we're dealing with d in this case and not x, it's going to be d. And personally, I find it very useful to write out the quadratic formula before I get started. So it's negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. I can match up my a, b, and c. a is negative 0 0.2, b is 2.5 and c is 8. So let's go ahead and start filling in that information. Uh, negative b is going to be negative 2.5, again plus or minus the square root of 2.5 squared minus 4 times negative 0 0.2 times 8, right? Negative 0 0.2 is a, 8 is c. All of this is in my square root and notice how I'm extending the top of my square root to include everything that is underneath it all divided by 2 times a, and again a is negative 0 0.2. Let's go ahead and start simplifying some of this. So I have negative 2.5 plus or minus the square root of 2 and a half squared is 6.25, and then we have negative 4 times negative 0 0.2 times 8, which is 6.4, so it's positive 6.4. 2 times negative 0 0.2 is negative 0 0.4. I'm going to jump a step here. I'm going to combine these and immediately take the square root. So I have 6.25 plus 6.4, which is 12.65. The square root of 12.65 is about 3.6, so I'm going to do plus or minus 3.6 divided by negative 0.4. I can go ahead and now find the two values for d. So option number one is that d is equal to negative 2.5 plus 3.6 divided by negative 0.4, and I'm, going to, I'm just going to do this in one step. So negative 2.5 plus 3.6 divided by negative 0 0.4 gives me negative 2.75. Negative distance does not make any sense in this case because distance is only forward. We're only moving forward. You can kind of think of it as time, okay? Once we launch the rocket, time is only increasing. It is not going backwards. So we know that we can throw out this uh, response it does not make any sense. Let's try option number two when d is negative 2.5 minus 3.6 all divided by negative 0 0.4. Let's do that on a calculator. Negative 2.5 minus 3.6 divided by negative 0 0.4 gives me 15.25. That makes sense, that is a forward distance, okay? So we know that this is the answer that we are looking for, okay? Remember the question was, determine the horizontal distance traveled by the rocket. From our starting point to where it hits the ground, it has traveled approximately a total of 15.25 meters. So I'm gonna conclude, therefore, the rocket has traveled 15, 0.25 meters horizontally. I was not finding the difference as we have done previously between negative 2.75 and 15.25 because I, I'm not starting from negative 2.75 or yeah I'm starting from zero and I'm only going forward so I'm going to go that's basically the difference between zero and 15.25 which is just 15.25. What is the maximum height of the rocket to the nearest thousandth? Okay, I've only rounded to tens, so we're just going to round to tens. Um, we'll do ten. What is the maximum height of the rocket? So in order to find the maximum height, we are looking for the vertex. 
the vertex is located exactly halfway between our two x-intercepts. And we had found our two x-intercepts. We had ignored the one that was negative because it didn't make sense in the context of the question. But now I need this piece of information in order to find my vertex because the vertex is halfway between those two things. So I need to add them together and divide by two. So I have negative 2.75 plus 15.25, add those together, divide by two. So the x value, uh, so we have negative 2.75 plus 15.25 divided by two is 6.25. So that's the x value of my vertex. In order to find the y value, I need to substitute that into my original equation. The original equation being negative 0.2d squared plus 2.5d plus 8. So negative 0 0.2, 6.25 squared plus 2.5 times 6.25 plus 8. Now it's just a matter of doing math. 6.25 squared is about 39, so we'll have negative 0 0.2 times 39 plus 2.5 times 6.25 plus 8. Okay, let's go ahead and do some multiplication here. Negative 0 0.2 times 39 is negative 7.8. 2.5 times 6.25 is 15. 0.625 plus 8. Let's add them all together. And my maximum height is about 15.825. Now remember I changed the question to round to the nearest tenth just because that's what we have been doing. So I'm going to round and say that h is about 15.8 meters. And I can conclude with a therefore statement. Therefore, maximum height of the rocket is 15.8, what about, meters. Okay, so that wasn't so bad. So we used our quadratic formula in the context of a word problem. Let's do a second one here just to finish off. A golf ball is hit and follows the path modeled by the equation h is equal to negative 1.3t squared plus 5.35t, where h is the height in meters and t is the time in seconds. After how many seconds did the ball hit the ground? Okay, we're looking for our x-intercept again because we're talking about hitting the ground. So let's go ahead and find that. You could probably solve by factoring here if you tried really hard, but because we're dealing with decimals, let's not waste our time. Let's immediately jump right into our quadratic formula. Again, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite my quadratic formula at the, the start of my question, just as a reminder. And I'm going to start substituting in some values. We have b is 5.35. So this is negative 5.35 plus or minus the square root of 5.35 squared minus 4 times negative 1.3. And we don't have a c value here. There's no plus or minus a number. So in fact, c is equal to 0. So I'm going to put just a 0 here all over 2 times a, which is negative 1.5, okay? Um, this makes this really easy because my second term here just goes straight to 0, and the square root of 5.35 squared is just 5.35. So I can immediately jump to x is equal to negative 5.35 plus or minus 5.35, all divided by negative 3. Okay, um, option number one here, actually all of these should be t, not x's, because we're talking about time. 
So option number one is that time is equal to negative 5.35 plus 5.35 divided by negative 3. Well, that's just 0 divided by negative 3, which is 0. So the golf ball starts when time is equal to 0. The second option is when we have negative 5.35 minus 5.35 divided by negative 3. That's going to give me negative 10.7 divided by negative 3. And I'm going to round that answer to be about 3.57 seconds. You might panic when you start to see some negative numbers in a context that doesn't make sense. So for example, you're seeing negative numbers when we're talking about time and you're like, you know, time can't be negative. That's okay because we can see at the end of the day, it landed as a positive number. And as we saw in our previous example, if you do actually get a negative number for your answer, and it doesn't make sense, it's really good that you've identified that and you can just say, nope, this doesn't make sense, we can throw out that answer, it's useless. I can write a therefore statement just to finish off here. So I can say therefore, the ball hit the ground after about 3.57 seconds. What was the maximum height of the ball? You probably predicted that that was coming. So we need to find the vertex, and recall the vertex is located exactly halfway between our two x-intercepts. So I need to add my two x-intercepts together and divide by two. Remember one was zero, the other was about 3.57. Add those together, divide by two. 3.57 divided by two is equal to about 1.785. Now we're going to plug this in to our formula. H was equal to negative 1.3 times t squared, t being 1.785 squared, plus 5.35 times 1.785. Okay, um, let's just go ahead and we'll do h is equal to negative 1.3. 1.785 squared uh, gives you a long number, so we're just going to round that to a nice 3.19 plus 5 time, 5.35 times 1.785. Negative 1.3 times 3.19 is equal to negative 4.147. 5.35 times 1.785 is equal to 9.55, just about. So we can add those two together. Negative 4.147 plus 9.35 gives me about 5.2. So the maximum height of the ball is 5. Point, is about 5.2 meters. Okay, again we're using the word about because there is some rounding along the way. Question C, for how long was the ball above four meters? Okay, we saw this in a previous question. We were able to solve by factoring. Recall that when we're looking to determine if the ball is above four meters, what we need to do is set H equal to four meters. So let's do that. Four is equal to one, negative 1.3 T squared plus 5.35 T. We need to determine the um, interval of time, so between what and what times was the ball above 4 meters, which means that we need to solve for those two pieces of time, those two time intervals. In order to do that, I need to move 4 
to the right hand side so that we are able to solve because in order to solve one side of your equation needs to be equal to zero. And now we're left with this. Again, these are some yucky decimals. Let's just go ahead and use our quadratic formula. x is negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. This time we actually have a c value as compared to before. Let's substitute some of those numbers in. b is 5.35, so this is negative 5.35 5 squared minus 4 times negative 1.3 times negative 4. All divided by 2 times negative 1.3. Uh, so we have negative 5.35. Let's just fix that. Negative 5.35, okay. Plus or minus the square root 5.3. 5.35 squared um, gives you 28.6225. Negative 4 times negative 1.3 times negative 4 gives you negative 20.8. And 2 times negative 1 gives 2.6. I'm going to jump a couple of steps here, so I'm going to do 28, here I'll show you my calculator, I'm going to do 28 minus 20.8, which gets me 7.2, I take the square root of that and it gets me 2.68, so I'm going to go 2.68 divided by negative 2.6, here's where we're going to split it up into two options. So option number one is that x is equal to negative 5.35 plus 2.68 divided by negative 2.6. Negative 5.35 plus 2.68 divided by negative 2.6 gives me about 1.03. The second option would be x is equal to negative 5.35 minus 2.68 all divided by negative, negative 5.35 minus 2.68 divided by negative 2.6 is equal to about 3.09. So those are the two times when the ball is above four meters. So it hits the four meter mark for the first time going up after one second. It's above, it's above, it's above, it's above, and then around three seconds later, or three seconds after it was initially hit, it hits the four meter mark on the way down. So going up it takes a second to hit four meters, it stays above four meters, and then around three seconds it's coming back down at four meters until it hits the ground. Again, the question was, so we need to find the distance between these two points. Okay, in order to do that, I'm going to find um, the space in between them or the interval in between them. So I'm just gonna do 3.09 minus 1.03, and that gives me 2.06. So I can say therefore, the ball was above four meters for about 2.06 seconds. Okay, and there you have it. So we've seen how to use the quadratic formula in a couple of different word problems. Um, again, when in doubt, always think about factoring first, but when you can't, you can just jump straight into the quadratic formula. Great job, everybody.